Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Star Wars 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we're going back to the archives to take a look at an older figure. This is of course none other than the Sideshow exclusive version of General Grievous. Now I have to say a huge thank you to my buddy Scott Jackson. Without him this review wouldn't be possible. He managed to procure one of these and of course was willing to sell me it for the purposes of making this video and I cannot wait to get him out here because General Grievous was one hell of an awesome character throughout the Clone Wars and of course in Revenge of the Sith as well. This happens to be the only six scale figure of Grievous available on the market right now. The price is going up so if you can get him check out eBay. That's the place where I think most people will be finding theirs. He in my opinion is definitely a must have in the growing Clone Wars line especially if Hot Toys doesn't actually go ahead and tackle him. I have my fingers and toes crossed though that they do eventually make their very own General Grievous. Now this is of course kicking off the Clone Wars series of videos. I will be every now and then releasing a video on a Clone Wars style character. Most specifically the commanders, the captains, all of the different types of clones that Sideshow have released in the past. Now I don't review a lot of Sideshow stuff but I definitely don't have any animosity or anything towards Sideshow. I just as I said don't have a lot of their stuff. I'm going back now though and picking up a hell of a lot more so definitely stay tuned to the channel for that. Either way if you do like seeing the Sideshow, Hot Toys, or other 1-6 scale content, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon so you're notified as soon as brand new content goes live on the channel. Either way, what we're going to do now is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. And here we have the box art for General Grievous himself. Now, as you can see, it's pretty basic in its execution, just General Grievous's logo with a nice two-tone gray motif. Very, very classy in its execution. Now, in terms of this, this one actually is the Sideshow exclusive version. What that means will reveal in just a second. Now, along the side, Star Wars General Grievous. And of course, on the back here, we do have a very nice artistic representation of of the figure himself. It's got a bit of effect on it and it looks really, really good. Now let's pop this box open because I'm really keen to see what General Grievous looks like in person. This will be the first time that I've ever looked at this figure. Now in terms of the accessories, they are housed on the top of the box there. You can see a bunch of different stuff, but we'll take a look at all of those bits and pieces in just a second. Now you can also see on the inside of the box is another artistic style image of the figure himself. My box has not fared too well over the years. As you can see, General Grievous atop a mountain of sideshow clones. You can see a couple of shock troopers, some wolf pack troopers, and of course General Grievous standing triumphant with all of his lightsabers ignited. It's actually a really nice image of the figure himself and a pose idea that might be worthwhile investigating. Now here we have the General himself. He is absolutely enormous. This box in and of itself is huge and then we have General Grievous taking up almost the entire thing. I thought he would have been crunched down a little bit, but no here he is and he looks absolutely Absolutely fantastic, at least fresh out of the box. He is very tall, he's a lanky boy, so when we have him posed up, I'm sure he's going to look even better. But as you can see, the detail just off the bat for an older figure, mind you, doesn't look too bad. This arm, though, appears to be a little bit floppy. Now, let's take a look at the rest of the stuff he does come with. There is his battle damaged faceplate, that is the exclusive accessory. And what do we have in here? A couple of those are his spare arms that can split, so he has the four armed look. Either way, what we're going to do now is get all of the accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. And here we have all of the accessories that come with General Grievous. Now, as you can see, he comes with a bunch of stuff. Usually when we get a bigger boy like General Grievous is, we get less accessories, but that definitely isn't the case with this guy right here. Now, let's take a look at the display base first. This is going to be your best friend when it comes to standing up your General Grievous in your display. He does struggle with that from time to time. Now, as you can see, his logo is there on the side. This also does pivot, rotate, and move backwards and forwards. And then on the bottom, it does have a nice rubber pad, so this won't go flying around in your display when General Grievous decides that he'd like to topple over. Now, let's take a look at his cape as well. He does have a huge logo on the back. I have to say, General Grievous does have his branding on point. Now, on the inside of the cape, you can see that it does have a nice velvety style material. It does have this diamond sort of quilting pattern. You can see it's very subtle, but it's definitely there. He also does have his pocket so he can add some lightsabers to his collection. 
selection. Now, one thing that I do want to complain about on this piece right here is there aren't any wires, unfortunately. I really do think that it would be a nice touch to have this sort of billowing in the wind. In fact, I might actually see if I can insert a wire in the sides there. Now, up the top, he does have the sort of clasp and press stud attachment. And then again, his little logo branding is definitely on point. Now, he also does come with a vibro blade. This is the first time that I personally have ever seen a six scale vibro blade. It looks good. The little effect pieces, they can come off, but I'd actually opt to leave them on there because I really like the way they look. Very dynamic and very lifelike. Now, he also does come with the secondary head sculpt. If you go for the exclusive version, I do actually really like the light piping on the eyes. They look ominous, they look evil, and they look really well detailed. So too does the battle damage. You can see some sort of gouges that have been carved out of the front of the faceplate there, and the rest of the detail looks equally as good as the normal faceplate itself. He also does come with his blaster. I know, so uncivilized, but it's nicely sculpted. Not very sort of detailed in the paintwork. It's a little bit simplistic, just a flat gunmetal color, but I'm sure you can add a little bit more detail to it if that's something you'd like to do. Now he does come with four lightsaber hilts and they are really nicely done. They're chromed, they're magnetic as well in case you'd like to install them into his hands. You can see some little plug points but those blades are actually fixed as far as I'm aware into those hilts right there so you can't remove them and then plug them into these ones which is a little bit unfortunate. Now as I said they are chrome and they are nicely painted however as you can see Paint doesn't really like to stick to chrome, so it will come off if you're not careful. Now let's take a look at a green and of course a blue lightsaber. Again, these are magnetic, so they like to stick to each other. The blue doesn't look anywhere near as vibrant, in my opinion, as the green. Now I might actually hit this with a blue Tamiya translucent paint and see what happens, but for now it looks a little bit boring and not really all that exciting. When you have General Grievous in your display, you want it to pop, including the lightsaber blades themselves. Now let's take a look at the last accessory pieces. These are of course his interchangeable arms and I will show you how to attach these onto the figure a little bit later in the video but just know that they look really good. These are of course his spider arms. They split. They do have a bunch of different joints in them. They are very very stiff mind you so definitely be careful. They're nice and ratcheted as you can see there but very very stiff. These ones unlike the standard arms actually can hold a pose which is definitely a bonus. Either way what we're going to do now is get the general himself out here and take a closer look. And here we have the general himself standing straight up and down the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that, except of course for his cape. I've had to also slightly hunch him down because of the size of him. His head is already right near the top of the light box. I apologize for the super blown out areas on the top of his head and his shoulders, but he's just that tall that he's sitting right atop the very top there, so the lights are literally shining right on him. But either way, he stands pretty well with the use of his display base. I I struggled for a good 10 to 15 minutes getting him to stand without it and I just gave up opted for the use of the display base. I advise that if you have yours as well, probably you'd want to go for that option because this guy is very spindly and he feels a little bit fragile, so I wouldn't want him taking any shelf dives, so definitely do be careful. Either way, what we're going to do now is punch in and take a closer look at the details. And here we have General Grievous himself up close and personal. I apologize again for the super blown out section on the top of his head there and the top of his shoulder pad, but I'm pretty sure you can see everything that you need to. Now let's talk about the head sculpt first. As you can see, it's really, really nicely detailed. I love all this sort of weathering and washes that they put into the bone work sections, and it comes across very, very nicely. Do be careful with these mandible style pieces. They are very, very fragile and very thin plastic. Now, in order to switch out the head sculpt, you literally just remove this piece right here. Look at those eyes glow. That looks really, really awesome, and I do appreciate that they did light piping there. That's something that they really didn't have to do, even though it kind of does get covered up when you plug it onto the head sculpt itself. Now, there is one issue that I kind of have, and it's how high this piece sits. And yes, I know it allows for a greater range of motion, but in the movie, I'm pretty sure these armor plates were sort of more pulled upwards rather than so splayed out. I know General Kenobi peeled these open and then shot his sort of organ sack, I guess you could call it, and he blew up, but I'm pretty sure these were a little bit more sort of close towards the top there. Now, you can move this down to sort of fake it, but still, it doesn't look as good as I think it should, so most of the time, I'm probably going to have my General Grievous displayed with the cape. Now one unfortunate thing about displaying him with the cape is you can see a tiny little bit here of red staining from the inside of the cape. Having a white style plastic or this sort of bone color 
will definitely pick up some of the dye from the cape itself, so I would suggest washing it to avoid any further damage. Now on the inside there you can see his organ sac is present, all the little details and bits and pieces. It is a translucent plastic, it looks a little bit cheap, I'm not going to lie. I would have appreciated this to be made out of some rubber or something like that to give it a real sort of organ texture to it, but for now it's definitely going to do the job just fine. Hopefully Hot Toys one day decide to do their very own Grievous. Now as you can see the armature on the inside here, it looks very very spindly and it is very very fragile. The joints have seen better days, I'm not going to lie. They are a little bit stiff but also a little bit floppy. I don't know how that works, they definitely don't hold poses very well at all anymore. You can see this one here is very very loose. But that being said, when you switch them out with these separated arms, those do like to hold poses just fine. So I'm actually torn between which arms I'm going to be displaying with my General Grievous. Either way, what we're going to do now is pan the camera down and give you a closer look at the legs. And here we have the rest of General Grievous. As you can see, his legs are very, very nicely detailed. They actually have some of the strongest joints on the entire figure. However, that being said, because he's so top heavy, he still tends to fall over, which is a darn shame because a figure like this, I would love to display without the display base in a super dynamic pose, but unfortunately it's just not possible. So you definitely will have to make use of this display base. Either way, let's take a look at the detail on the legs. As you can see, they do have these nice hollow style sections which make them even lighter. This entire figure actually isn't that heavy but all of the weight happens to just be at the top. Now he does have some nice bone work detail on the bottom there and of course his nice chicken leg style feet which if you don't know what I mean they sort of come down and go backwards and then go in all sorts of crazy directions which is accurate to the movie so they definitely got that right. Now the feet themselves have this really nice spider like look about them. They're very nicely dry brushed for its age. That being said if Hot Toys was to tackle a General Grievous in the modern era, I'm sure the paintwork and detail will be even better than what we're seeing right here. Now I just quickly wanted to show you what it looks like and how you interchange the arms on General Grievous. Now to start off you literally just want to pull off the arm joint at the little peg itself and then you can take I guess the quadruple arms or the double arms and you can just plug them in there. Now these I actually do prefer because the joints are a little bit stiffer compared to the original arms themselves. These ones are a lot more floppy whereas these can definitely hold a pose. Either way you'll see these properly posed up towards the later end of the video. And now for a quick side by side comparison here we have the Hot Toys Obi-Wan Kenobi standing alongside the General Grievous from Sideshow and I have to say these two look really really good together. This happens to be the reason why I wanted to pick up General Grievous. Sometime down the line I want to have Obi-Wan versus General Grievous in the display case when we eventually get Commander Cody. Hopefully some Hot Toys clones along with the Airborne Trooper that would be an absolutely awesome display to recreate that Utapau scene. I can't wait to be able to do that in the display and even fingers crossed that Hot Toys eventually gives us their very own version of General Grievous. Like I've said a couple of times throughout this video, this one definitely is good for now, don't get me wrong, but still there are improvements that could be made especially by the folks over at Hot Toys. Just going over articulation on General Grievous. Now I'm going to be a little bit more careful with my personal copy of this figure. He is getting a little bit older now, a little bit harder to find, so I definitely don't want to break anything. If you have one and you want to push the joints a little bit further, then that's totally your prerogative. Now let's start off with the head sculpt itself. The actual head is on a ball joint. It can move around every which way. All of these sort of rubber hoses and bits and pieces do a nice enough job of getting out of the way. Now in terms of this sort of neck piece, it rotates moves up and down independently as well. Now the arms themselves, they are on really nice tight ratchet joints, so hopefully they will be able to hold some poses. These two pistons, however, are a little bit on the looser side. They are sort of just pegged in there, and these pistons can move up and down and move around. Now he also does have a bend at the elbow. It's only a single bend, but with how sort of thin and fragile everything is, I am totally fine with that. The hand itself is on somewhat of a 1-6 scale style sort of wrist peg, it can move around and it can actually swivel. It is very tight though, so I don't want to be too hard on that piece right there. The fingers also can move and the little thumbs, I guess you call them, can move outwards. Now in terms of the actual body itself, it does have a ball joint down here at the lower part of the waist and it does swivel quite nicely. It doesn't actually get any forward and backwards, so it might actually only be a swivel joint. I retract the statement about it being a ball joint. Now the legs themselves, they are also very tight. They go forward. They do go out just a little bit 
However, they don't seem to swivel, which is a darn shame. His legs are always sort of straight onwards. I would have liked to have been able to swivel them out ever so slightly. Now, the legs have a bunch of different joints in there. There is a joint at the top, then there is a joint that's actually below the knee. I guess you could call that piece right there. It's a kneecap of sorts. Then you do have another joint down here that is very stiff and again, ratcheted. Then you do have a swivel down there. And finally, another joint down here at the foot. Now you can actually move this base part of the foot independently of this part here. So hopefully you should be able to get Grievous to stand in some poses. Just wrapping up on the Sideshow General Grievous. Now this figure, he's getting on a little bit in his age. He's a little bit older now. He's a little bit hard to find. And yes, he does have his flaws. He's spindly. His joints are a little bit loose. He's incredibly large. He's tough to get standing without his display base. However, with all of that being said, I honestly still really like this General Grievous, and I'm sure that's to nobody's surprise. This is the only six-scale General Grievous on the market, and he comes with a bunch of stuff, which for the day is actually really, really impressive. I like the cloak, I like the lightsabers, I like the interchangeable arms, so I personally am willing to overlook some of the flaws that this guy does have. The paintwork is actually really nice, surprisingly, for an older sideshow piece, which I know will make a lot of people happy. If you are looking to pick up a General Grievous, I would suggest looking on eBay or some of your hot toys buy and sell groups, the local ones at least, maybe you'll get lucky and someone's willing to sell theirs like my buddy Scott Jackson was for me. Thank goodness that I now am able to add General Grievous to the collection. Now I know some of you are typing down in the comments, pass, we'll wait for hot toys or hot toys will do this eventually. And yeah, you're probably right. I really hope hot toys does. But in the meantime, I personally am going to be very happy to have this version of General Grievous in my display. Either way, I hope you liked the video. If you did, head down to the comment section and let me know. Also, hit that like button. And while you're down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the brand new awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.